I'm a 33-year-old man, married to Summer, who is 28, for four years now. Our journey began back when I had just finished college, and we both enrolled in the same career training program. It was there that we first crossed paths, and over time, our friendship blossomed into love. Initially, I hesitated to reveal my feelings, wary of being hurt again after a toxic past relationship. But as we grew closer, it became evident that we shared a mutual attraction, and we eventually started dating. Two years into our relationship, we tied the knot and moved into a larger apartment. Living with Summer has been a joy, as I've had the opportunity to discover more about her every day. I appreciate her dynamic personality and the surprises she always brings. During the early days of our marriage, we were inseparable, doing everything together, from mundane tasks like shopping and bathing to sharing intimate moments of prayer. I firmly believed in the idea that spending quality time with your partner strengthens the bond between you, and that's exactly what I cherished with Summer. Before we got married, Summer and I decided not to have kids until we were ready so that we could enjoy each other's company without any distractions. While Summer worked as a secretary in a big tech firm, I worked as a construction worker. Our earnings were enough to sustain our simple yet sophisticated life, and we kept working hard, believing that we would transition into better careers in the future. Between the two of us, Summer was the more social one, and she could make friends with anybody she wanted to. I was the polar opposite of her. I barely made friends and was only close to my older brother. Summer had a best friend, Claire, who was 28, and they had been friends since their early school days. On my end, I stuck to being close to my brother because it was difficult for me to open up to new people. I had a few friends, but no one was close enough to be called a best friend. Summer and her best friend were so close that if one didn't know better, one could mistake them as sisters. They were both blonde, had the same eye color, and acted similarly. Claire was like a family member to us, and we visited each other's places frequently. Claire was a lawyer, and her husband had his own business. Occasionally, we would arrange outings as a family unit and always hang out at least twice a month. Being an introvert, I tried my best to build a strong relationship with Claire's husband, but no matter how hard, I tried, it didn't go smoothly. Our conversations felt forced, and every other thing we did felt forced too. Despite feeling this way, I never complained. When Summer and Claire fixed an outing or planned for us to go on a vacation as a family unit, I understood that Summer was only trying to make us have fun and not get overwhelmed with work. I also tried to use those opportunities to get rid of my introvertedness. This is to say that Claire's husband was no stranger to me at all, Summer was also very close to him. Since they had known each other for at least two years before I came into the picture, I didn't suspect anything fishy was going on between us until Claire asked for us to meet one day in a cafe. When I met Claire that day, she looked worried, and the first thing she said to me was, I think my husband is cheating on me. Initially, I was confused because her husband did not seem like the kind of man who would cheat on her, he loved her so much and literally adored the ground she walked on. Anytime we went out for dinner, a picnic, or went over to have dinner at their place, her husband always treated Claire like she was the only woman on earth. It even got to a point where Summer began to compare me to Claire's husband. Every time we returned from our team hangout, she always had a way of pointing out the things Claire's husband did for Claire and the things I didn't do for her. She complained over and over until it got on my nerves. It felt like Summer was jealous of her best friend and how her husband treated her, but she never admitted it. The thing is, Claire's husband inherited a big landscaping business from his father, so even without working so hard, he had the money rolling in for him and could afford to buy Claire fancy things and other expensive lady stuff. Each time Claire received something fancy from her husband, she would call and tell Summer excitedly, and the two would talk about it. But immediately after Summer got off the call, she would say nasty things about Claire and how she didn't deserve to get two expensive bracelets in three months. I never mentioned this to Claire or her husband because I felt it was a best friend's thing to want to have what her best friend has. So when Claire told me she suspected her husband was cheating on her, it shocked me. I didn't try to vouch for him because I knew it would be foolish. Then, just as I was trying to look at things from her angle, it dawned on me that she was supposed to be conversing with Summer, not me. When I asked Claire why she was talking to me instead of Summer, she gave me a response that made my throat dry up. Claire had told me that she suspected her husband was having an affair with Summer, her best friend, my wife. I didn't know what to say. But I told her it wasn't possible that Summer would be having an affair with her best friend's husband. On my end, I was a good husband to her and I showered her with enough love and attention. 
I knew I did not gift her as much as Claire's husband had gifted CLA, but I tried my best to gift her on her birthdays or any occasion we celebrated. Even though I doubted that Summer could stoop so low to cheat on me with her best friend's husband, a part of me believed it was true. I almost zoned out, retrospecting Summer's behavior over the last few months. I realized that Summer indeed had been acting differently. She no longer had time for me like she used to, and she had this unexplainable glow and excitement every time she was about to step out. Summer also became so cold, and we would stay in the same room, and it would feel like she wasn't there. Our conversations felt forced, and her bumbling sense of humor was gone. Even when I tried to crack jokes, I took it as a phase that would pass eventually, but I was wrong. Aside from that, Summer recently renovated her wardrobe and got more tight and exposing clothes. She wore them to work and any time she wanted to go out. They made her look like a teenager in heat. I wasn't the kind of person who objected to my wife's clothing choices, so I never said anything. All this while, I didn't know that Summer started wearing those teeny tiny dresses to seduce her best friend's husband. So, after Claire told me about her suspicions, we decided that we would investigate on our own before concluding anything. After returning home, I waited for Summer to sleep so that I could go through her phone. She was clean as a whistle. I checked all her social media accounts to see if she had been communicating with Claire's husband there, but I couldn't find anything. I searched for a week and even went through her work laptop, but there was nothing. At one point, I even felt bad that I was trying to find something that had the possibility of not existing. But when I saw how distant we had become in the space of weeks, I was sure she was seeing someone, even if it wasn't Claire's husband. On the other hand, I didn't know that Claire had hired a private investigator to follow her husband around. After what seemed like a week and some days of the PI following him around, Claire turned out to be correct. Indeed, Summer was having an affair with Claire's husband. And after we saw all the pictures and videos of them hanging out together, kissing each other, and doing the other things cheaters do, we were so heartbroken. I don't even know who was the most heartbroken between us. Maybe it was Claire because it wasn't easy to find out the two people she trusted in her life could betray her like that. As for me I wasn't just heartbroken, I was mad. It was painful to know that all my sacrifices were just about to go down the drain because of a wife with no contentment. She always had her eyes out for everything Claire's husband was doing for CLA, and in the end, she betrayed her best friend and destroyed two marriages. After Claire sent all the evidence to me, I tried as much as possible to stay calm. The first day, I didn't sleep at home because I feared what I could do to Summer. I had to go and meet Claire because she was the only one who could relate to my pain. After comforting each other, I dropped her at her house and went to look for a motel to pass the night. Funnily enough, I still couldn't sleep because I was deeply hurt. The thoughts of Claire's husband having intimacy with my wife kept running through my head. Around the same time, I began to put the pieces together and understood why our intimacy life just disappeared. The following morning was a weekend, so I went home. Summer was at home, unbothered that I slept out of the house. Merely looking at her made me angry, and I tried so much to control my emotions, but I couldn't. I had to confront her about it. When I told her I was hearing rumors about her and Claire's husband, she froze and asked me, how did you find out? Look, I expected that she would deny it, and she did not disappoint. She told me that it was insane of me to believe that she could betray her best friend and cheat on me. She looked so convincing that I would have believed her if I didn't have the evidence the private investigator gathered. So, after laughing at her ignorance, I brought out my phone and showed her all the pictures and videos Claire had sent me. When Summer saw them, she flipped immediately and said that someone was trying to frame her up and that the video and pictures weren't what I thought. I told her the videos were from her best friend, Claire, so they could not have been forged. I had barely finished what I was saying when Summer started yelling at the top of her voice. She said that Claire was trying to destroy our marriage and that she always knew Claire was always jealous of her. To be honest, that was the last thing I expected to hear from her. She was such a great actress, and before I could say another word, she took her car keys and stormed out of the house in anger. I wasn't bothered when she left because I knew she would come home to me. But I didn't know Summer had gone to confront Claire. I was at home, looking at the evidence, when I got a call from Claire that Summer had come to her house and physically assaulted her. She even broke a couple of things at her home, and they were no longer friends. It felt like a joke because I didn't expect Summer to go and confront Claire, even after she had been caught red-handed. It didn't make sense to me. Shortly after Summer was done at Claire's house, she came up looking all peaceful like nothing had just happened. 
When I asked her why she had gone to assault her best friend, her response was, because I had been wanting to put her in her place for a very long time. Her response said it all, and at that moment, I knew I had been blinded by love the whole time. It was evident that Summer never loved Claire as she made it look. She had been bitter about her friend's progress and had been pretending the whole time. When I went to see Claire at the hospital later that evening, I was shocked at the extent of what Summer had done to her best friend of so many years. Between the two of them, Summer was the wilder and Claire was mainly peaceful. Claire was unique in her own way, and I guess that was what Summer envied. I had a gut feeling that it wasn't just about her husband, Summer must have felt threatened by Claire's success and life of ease, so she wanted to take away the one thing that mattered to her. It turned out that Summer didn't only hurt Claire physically, she also hurt her emotionally and said things a best friend shouldn't say to her best friend. Summer had vented out in front of Claire and her husband how Claire always acted like the better one between them and was tired of seeing Claire live the life she wanted. She even went as far as saying that she was tired of Claire rubbing all of her success and gifts in her face, and she hated Claire for always making her feel like she was nothing. Claire said she was shocked when Summer said all those things and didn't know Summer felt that way about her all those years. With that, I knew Summer was a lost cause, and if she could betray her best friend like that, she could do anything to me. She was capable of cold-blooded murder, and that wasn't the kind of woman I wanted to spend the rest of my life with. Funnily enough, after her relationship with Claire's husband was exposed, she tried to come back to me, although I have told her. I'm seeing a divorce lawyer. I haven't filed the papers yet. She thinks that there's still a chance. Her attitude changed, and she stopped going out like before. Now she's been trying to do things she stopped doing. She tries to seduce me and cook for me, but I can see through her pretense. I've been eating out since I found out, and I won't stop until Summer is out of my roof. After Claire and I found out about Summer's betrayal, Claire begged me to control my emotions and continue with Summer so she could think our marriage was still intact. Now the thing is, looking at her disgusts me. I cannot let her touch me because my mind is no longer with her. But despite everything she has done, a part of me still loves and yearns for her. What do I do? If we fix things in the future, she will still cheat on me. We've only been married for four years, and she's already cheating. At the same time, I just wish I could kick her out of my house and throw her things on the lawn so the neighbors can know how much of a loose woman she is. Meanwhile, Claire officially divorced her husband last week, and Summer has been low-key insinuating that Claire was not good enough for her husband. She still thinks I bought her lies about Claire framing her. She believes our marriage will continue as before, but she's mistaken. Anyways, it's all for the best. Claire has been cooking something for Summer, and I can't wait to see her face when it happens. Most importantly, I can't wait to throw her cheating but out of my house. Now for the first update, hello, everyone. Thank you for your comments. While waiting for Claire's signal, I shifted to a hotel because I could not bear Summer's face. I felt disgusted looking at her. Meanwhile, Claire has fully recovered from her injuries sustained from Summer's assault, and she has dragged Summer to court. She sued Summer for alimony and for physically assaulting her. When Summer got served, she stormed into my workplace because she wasn't aware of my hotel. She said Claire had no right to sue her for alimony and she wouldn't give her a dime. She even said Claire started the fight between them so she did everything she could to defend herself. I knew that was a lie because when she returned from CLA's house that day, she said something about putting CLA in her place, which did not seem like a defense. I told her that it was not my problem anymore. She has dug the road for herself, and now she herself has to travel alone. Long story short, Claire had the upper hand in court, and the court ruled in her favor. The court ordered Summer to pay up the alimony, and she was fined extra for assaulting Claire in her own home. Although I wasn't present for the live action, Claire kept me updated. That day, I went back home to complete the task I had been longing for. As soon as Summer saw me, she started playing the victim, and I left her alone to deal with all this mess. She had the nerve to say I was the worst husband because I didn't support her. She said I should have sided with her to attack Claire together. When she stopped talking, I told her that husbands were meant to support loyal and faithful wives, not cheaters like her. The annoying thing was she still acted innocent and asked what I meant by that. Seeing that stupid innocent look on her face even angered me more, and I began to yell at her. I told her I knew she was sleeping with her best friend's husband, but I had to pretend like I didn't, so in the end, she would experience what it felt like to have her hope shattered. As I spoke, I pulled out the divorce papers and asked her to sign them. 
When she saw them, she fell on her knees and began to beg me. She said she had lost everything and could not afford to lose me. I told her it was already too late, and I began to throw her things out on the front lawn. Just as I had imagined, I was so surprised to see Summer cry and run after me in the house like that. I didn't know she had it in her. I ended up throwing her out, and I made sure I removed all of her property and littered them on the lawn. All of this happened last week, and since then, she has been calling me, sending me numerous voicemails, and multiple messages a day on all of our mutual social media platforms. She even went as far as calling my older brother to talk to me on her behalf, but I asked him to block her and he did. I will make another update as soon as she signs the divorce papers. Now for the second update. Hello everyone, I'm glad to see your comments. For those asking if I felt fulfilled when I threw Summer out of the house, yes, I did. It was as if a burden had been lifted off my shoulders, and I wish I could do it repeatedly. I kicked Summer out of the house last month. The last time she came to my house, she met Claire there with me, and she was so angry. I know the last person she expected to see was Claire, and it wasn't a beautiful sight for her to behold. She was also shocked that Claire and I had become great companions while she lived out there in pain and misery. I even have a gist, so Summer tried to return to her mother's house after I kicked her out of my house, but when her mother heard that she had betrayed her best friend and cheated on me, she disowned her and kicked her out of the house. I'd be lying if I said I wasn't glad when Summer met Claire at my house. I loved the look of defeat on her face when Claire answered the door. We didn't even let her into the house because she was negative energy. Perhaps if I hadn't intervened promptly, she might have attacked Claire on my premises. However, I confronted her sternly, warning that any future intrusion into my home would result in her arrest. Despite my warning, she lingered, causing a disturbance and baselessly accusing me of infidelity with Claire. In response, Claire vehemently defended herself, denouncing Summer's accusations and asserting her loyalty as a friend. We hoped our exchange would shame Summer into leaving, but she remained defiant, alternating between tears and defensiveness like a volatile child. As her disturbance escalated, neighbors emerged, prompting me to contact the authorities. Ultimately, she was apprehended, leading to our divorce and her expulsion from my life. Summer suffered significant losses, including her husband, best friend, financial stability, and familial support. Her remorse, if any, was well earned. I am grateful for the support of our community during this ordeal. Thank you for your engagement and advice. Your presence is invaluable to me. Until we meet again, take care. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe if you found this content enjoyable. Farewell for now.